cool. Hey everyone, how's it going? Devin here again with Make Anything. So every now and again, I like to talk about the sustainability of 3D printing. When you're making a real specialty part and it's just one of something, it's a good option. When you create something that helps you repair a part that would otherwise be trash, that's sustainable. If you need to make a thousand of something, well, 3D printing might not be the best option just yet. And also, when you're printing as much as me, you're inevitably going to end up with a lot of scrap material. So this is just some of the wasted plastic I have right now. Things that I'm either just done with, or they didn't quite work out. And of course, a ton of failed prints. It happens. But today, I'm going to try to give some new life to all this junk and turn it into something cool. My plan is to crush this all up, melt it into a sheet, and then melt it into a bowl. It's another one of those experimental episodes, so whether or not this works out, I want to show you guys the process. Um, I think it'll be fun. So let's go ahead and smash. All right, so before I can melt down this plastic into something useful, I have to crush it up and make it a little more consistent. That way, when I melt it, everything melts a little more evenly. You know, it'll be cool to see the evidence of what these things used to be. Maybe just like part of a leg or part of the grill, maybe something will still show up in the final part. So I'm not gonna try to pulverize them into a powder, but I do need to break them up into smaller bits. And that's why I have this big hammer, a lead block, towel to cover it, and of course, my safety glasses. So let's go ahead and start smashing. So I'm just gonna take a towel here so bits don't fly everywhere. Oh yeah. I also use some clippers to make sure everything is small enough, and then it's just a matter of smashing everything. This is definitely the stress relieving part of the process. Once I've got a whole bunch of crushed plastic, I'm going to pour it into this trash can for a minute so that I can spray my pan with this MR150, which is a release agent, so that the plastic will come out after it's baked. So with the baking pan coated in release agent, I can pour the plastic back in there and make sure it's spread out nice and evenly. So now that I'm happy with that, I'm just going to go ahead and throw it in my regular old oven. Alright, so I've got the oven set to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the lowest temperature this one will do. I've got my tray full of plastic in there. And um, I don't know how long I want to keep this in or anything, so I'm just going to keep a very close eye on this. You know, when I was doing my first internship at a small startup 3D printing company, I almost got fired for throwing one little 3D printed part in the microwave. And now I'm throwing a whole tray full of parts in the oven. So, you know, that shows how much I've learned. <laughs> 20 minutes in, the oven got to temperature and started melting the plastic. By 30 minutes, you could definitely see the things starting to merge together. By 45 minutes, everything was pretty much flattened out and my kitchen was starting to smell a little bit, so I decided to call it, turn off my oven, and take out my plastic. Yeah, like I said, it did smell, so this is probably not the best thing to do in your kitchen oven, but for the sake of experimentation, I did it. And as you can see, the patterns that came out are super wild. Luckily, the MR150 did its job just perfectly, and also because the plastic shrinks as it's cooling, it pretty much just popped right out of the baking pan. So now that I've got a flat sheet, I'm gonna melt this plastic again over a bowl, and that'll hopefully turn the plastic into a bowl. So first, to get the sizing right, I traced out the diameter of my bowl onto the plastic using a Sharpie. Then I took it to my bandsaw and cut out the circles. And if you don't have shop tools like this, a handsaw will work just fine. It'll just take a lot longer.
All right, so I was able to get three very sweet discs out of this one sheet of plastic. And the idea is to melt those over this bowl to make nice little plastic bowls. Um, so I'm gonna use this mold release again. It seemed to do the job really well before. Make sure this is nice and covered. And then I will just set this right on top and let it melt in the oven. See what comes out. So after another 40 minutes in the oven, the plastic definitely melted over the bowl, but it looked a lot messier than I was hoping for. I also tried a few other techniques, like softening the plastic in boiling water and then pressing it into the bowl, but the plastic didn't get quite pliable enough. I also experimented with melting the plastic onto the inside of the bowl, and it was another half successful result. So I couldn't help myself. I made a second batch because the first one turned out so cool. You know, I thought it was okay, but the other side I think is super cool. There's this section here where I pushed down from the top while it was cooling and it caused all the plastic to spread out and make a really cool pattern. So this one, I think I'm gonna have to just keep it as a giant piece. Um, I'm probably just gonna trim the edges and hang this up or something. All right, so I sanded out the edges of this and cleaned it up a little. The bowls were semi-successful. I mean, they show the potential there. These two didn't come out perfectly or anything. But I think if you had a two-part mold pressing on the plastic from both sides, you would definitely get some impressive results. So basically, I've just ended up with a couple material samples. They're not actually useful things yet. Unless you make it into a coaster or a placemat, you know, everything can be a coaster. <laughs> but for now, I'm going to stop here and let myself get some inspiration over the next weeks. And by the time I have a bunch of junk built up again, I'll be able to make something really cool. I'm thinking if I made a nice thick sheet of this plastic, I could make a really sweet little skateboard. So that's kind of my current goal. Oh, and I've also got these parts that dripped, and they look super cool, actually. They look like little artificial gemstones. Super colorful and awesome. So hey, I guess there's some jewelry applications there as well. The way light shines through them is really cool too, so you can make a lampshade or just some kind of light cover. What we do know now is that you can, in fact, recycle the plastic that you use with your 3D printer and give it a second life. But anyways, I'd love to hear any suggestions you guys have. What should I make out of all this? Who knows, maybe I'll love your idea and it'll show up in one of my next episodes. Until then, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Stay inspired.